Hello, I'm Tom Rubel, Executive Director of the Morgan Arts Council, and this is State of the Art. Today I want to welcome Eileen Berger. Eileen is curating our current show here at the Ice House called Faces of Our People. Welcome, Eileen. Thank you. Um, tell me about the show, uh, Faces of Our People. Obviously, we expect to see, when people come in the gallery, expect to see faces. There will be a lot of faces. Um, part of the theory behind the show is, is I'm a believer that there's one race, and that's the human race. Mm -hmm. And this show attempts to show the universal spirit of people. How does that get achieved? I think that there are so many things as human beings we do that are alike, regardless of our skin color, regardless of what country we came from, regardless of our religion. So throughout the art, there are simple things. I mean, there's children. Yep. There are people working. Mm -hmm. There are things that are just very universal to all of us. Mm -hmm. uh, how many artists are in your show? 23. 23, wow. Uh, and are they all sort of regional, or are they international, or are they... They're not, they're all American artists. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of them didn't start in America. There's right. a couple Jamaican artists in the show that have lived here longer than they ever lived in Jamaica. Uh -huh. um, a good bunch of them are internationally known. Almost all of them are nationally known. Great, great. Um, what brought you to the Ice House? What interested you in, in us? And, and uh, you know, we've, we've, uh, we're a tiny little town, and we've got... Uh, we like to think we promote art in a big way. Um, what interested you in, in doing a show here? Well, it's a beautiful venue, for starters. Thank you. And um, it's a chance to get people that would never see this art to look at the art. Mm -hmm. So that's very important to me and to my artists. Good. Good. Um, what about your background? Tell me a little bit about you. Oh, my background, I started as a professional photographer decided I was tired of traveling all the time, so I gave that up. Mm -hmm. And just kind of took, I started in the art business as a frustrated collector. Yeah. You know, I, was it eclectic, or did you have a specific line I of absolutely interest? love American black artists. Uh -huh. And when I first started collecting, there was no internet, there were very few books, and there were very few venues where you could find the art. Mm -hmm. So that frustration led me into the gallery business. What, what did you find appealing, or what was the common thread in, in the, the black artists that you were attracted to? For art for me, for me as a collector, mm -hmm. has to be both vis visual and visceral. Mm -hmm. So the response I had to the art is what got me collecting and started the whole bath. What do you think when I'm uh, in the gallery looking for a thread, uh, would I see a different thread than you would see in terms of in this show or would I see some sort of common theme? Hopefully you'll see a common thing, but I think art automatically is very much interpretive. Mm -hmm. So you know, you'll look at a piece and just see something, to most people will look at a piece and see something totally different than I might say. Right. And this art is, it's all, uh, it, it's all one art form or is it, you know? It's multimedia. There's a little bit of probably every medium that exists within the show. Mm -hmm. um, Give me a few examples. Um, there's acrylic paints, there's work on wood that's actually burned wood with oil over it. Uh -huh. There are pieces on both paper and canvas. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a couple of etchings in the show. Uh, some beautiful, beautiful quilts. Yep. Uh, if you could uh, highlight one or two artists, I'd just like to get a sense of, of who they are, their background. And, and Well, two of my most popular artists at the gallery, Carolyn Crump's the lady that does the art quilts. Mm -hmm. But when I, hang, when I finish hanging everything, you'll find that she does multiple mediums. Most of them very dimensional, very textured, which is what led her along the way to start quilting. Yeah. And Charlie Palmer is a noted social expressionist. Mm -hmm. And what's his art form? A uh, little bit of everything again. A lot of acrylic, but very textural pieces. Um, watercolor. Wow. So, so a lot of variety in this A lot show. of variety. And a lot of art. I take it. A lot of art. <laughs> um, I know we have uh, Faces of Our People in the gallery, and then there's a, an adjunct show to that, too, isn't there? That's a totally abstract show that's called Symphony of Shape. Mm -hmm. um, so most of the artists that are in that show also have pieces and Faces of Our People. What's the distinction? How do they, what do you put in, in that show versus the Faces um, of Our People? The abstract show is very textural. It's, it, it's just all about form and shape and color. Yep, yep. Um, what drew you to... To, I mean, aside from your interest in, in 
these artists, what sort of drew you away from photography and into art? Just the collecting piece, or, or was there something that pulled you toward it? Um, I really got into it because as I met the artists, I found out why they were underrepresented. and it, had, it was strictly to do with skin color. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I was living in D.C. when I first started collecting, yeah. and I couldn't understand why I couldn't find pieces by these artists in my local galleries. Right. But for the most part, they were in the museum, but not in the galleries. Right. So the artists kind of propelled me into the business. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's changed in the course of those 30 years? Or, or? It has, but it's starting to change back the other way again. Really? So as cities become more gentrified, there are less, there's less and less galleries open to begin with. Right. You know, a lot of galleries in the last 10 years have closed. Mm -hmm. And I understand. You know, there's a lot that goes into running a gallery that people don't think about. So, so from that standpoint, it's more about the cost of, of the gallery space as right. opposed to the clientele, because one would assume that if you have a gentrifying neighborhood, there'd be a better art market. So well, there is, but, but so many people now, especially younger people, look to the internet before they ever walk into a gallery. Uh, that's a factor, yeah. Very much a factor. <clears throat> I have a hard time, though, with art on the internet, just like a lot of things, you know. It's sort of like bricks and mortar business, unless yeah. I can go in and touch and feel it. And, and that's how I am with art. So I would think that galleries would still at least have a, a, a shot. Now, will you find us, look at, look at the Ice House, we're two hours away from D.C. and, and Baltimore, uh, and you find a lot of artists in our region, um, but we still struggle to uh, tap into that, that one of our goals actually right now is to tap into emerging artists right. and, and young artists who really can't afford uh, their, their own space and, and, as, and beyond that, gallery space too. Well, and artist galleries are difficult because you're showing yourself. Right. You know, you walk into my gallery, you see 50 different artists. Mm -hmm. And my gallery, because of my location, is very much a destination gallery because I'm about an hour, hour and 15 from D.C. and Baltimore. Right. Right. So, you know, people, a lot of people that come to my gallery now have found me on the internet. Many of them have already picked out three or four pieces that they want to see in person. So it can cut both ways. Absolutely. I mean, they can find you on the internet, they'll show up. And I have clientele all over the country thanks to the internet. Right, right. Um, well, just in, in, in sort of uh, wrapping up this conversation, at least about the, sh the current show, um, what do you think would draw anybody out on a cold January day to come to the Ice House and what, what's, what pulls them in our direction for this well, show? Well, I hope the name of the show itself helps to pull them in that direction. Right. And then the other hope is when a few people come to see it, they will absolutely tell their friends. Yep. Because, you know, I'm hoping to dispel some of the ideas of what constitutes black art or African American art. Mm -hmm. It's interesting to me because I've seen, uh, we. We sort of have Appalachian art out our way and uh, various kinds of art forms and, and that sort of sometimes gets uh, a little bit uh, sidelined. Right. Sort of like you may perceive that, that, that black artists sometimes get sidelined. Right. <clears throat> Do you think that's just a function of where we grew up geographically and our own personal biases in terms of of what we're used to seeing as art, well, or do you think it's just... you know, I think art for many people has to feel comfortable. Yeah. And I think that's what drives regional art. Yep. You know, very much. Yep. Uh, growing up in D.C., I got to see all different kinds of art. Sure. So I think that opened me up to exploring the venue I explored. Right. And growing up in Iowa, where Grant Wood is <laughs> what everybody's stereotype of what we had for art or so far art. So it's, it's <clears> one <throat> of the most known pieces around the world, so, yeah. you know, we can't talk bad about Grant Wood. Well, that's true. That's true. <laughs> and, but that sort of rural, uh, well, idyllic yeah, he, sort of absolutely. landscape. He was considered an American regionalist. Right, right. And there's many, many genres of art, you know, maybe even too many. So, so just kind of on that note... Do you think there's a difference between um, African-American rural art and African-American urban art, or do you, do you see any distinctions there? Maybe, and the medium's used probably more than the subject matter itself. Really? So, I think the city artists are more willing to explore many more mediums. They also have more availability of, of materials. Yeah, yeah. But in terms of subject, is it, you know? Um, there's definitely a southern regional subset to African American why I art. Asked about that because yeah. I've seen some of that. Yeah, there, there's there's very southern pieces. The rest of the country, it's similar. California, we see a lot more three dimensional works. Mm -hmm. um, New York, definitely a lot of figurative work, but also a lot of very cutting edge, almost graffiti like work. Right, right. 
So yeah, there's there's going to be regional differences. Right, because that was, that popped to mind when I was thinking of you know the Grant Wood sort of stuff right. versus. Uh, I think you see those distinctions, and even in the hills of West Virginia and, and out in this region, you see different approaches. Um, we were, we had an artist friend who uh, came out of the Philadelphia area, where he had an African American artist who'd been there for. Uh, over two years, or he'd been there most of his life doing his art, and he came up here to a rural area in Pennsylvania and spent a couple weeks, and I went and, and spoke with him, and he was having a ball with the natural, you know, landscape around here, and, and, and having to think through how that was impacting what he was doing right. while he was here, and he did a lot of pencil sketches that were very different from what he was doing otherwise, well, yeah. but, he was, but he was sort of resisting the notion that I'm going to make this pastoral. Right. Well, and I think artists do explore different subjects in different mediums just as a way to challenge themselves also. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think, uh, I think I, we're very thrilled that you're here. We're Thank you. We're very thrilled that you're putting this show together. Um, I hope that everyone will come out and, and see it. Um, it's, from what I've seen so far, it, very colorful. Very colorful. That is absolutely one of the hallmarks of African American yeah, work. and exciting. So, Eileen, thank you for putting this together for us here at the Ice Thank House. you for inviting and me. And we look forward to a great show. Great. Thanks. Uh, thanks again for joining us for uh, State of the Art, and we hope you'll come uh, and view the show here during January uh, and early February, and uh, we'll leave the coffee on for you.